Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Beyond the Real. I'm Chase, and with me as always, co-piloting this crazy ship is Preston. Preston, how you doing? I'm fine, just a little forgetful today. Yeah, so we're uh, we're doing this a little differently. We're huddled up close together, uh, recording this on one microphone, because Preston forgot to bring his, yep. but uh, we're making do, we're making it work. <laughs> we're definitely not six feet apart. We're definitely not six feet apart, but let's try not to breathe in each other's faces. Uh, we should be wearing masks, too. That would be pretty bad audio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you, yeah. You don't want to hear me talk like this all day? That would be pretty good. <laughs> we could throw on a couple of these Stormtrooper helmets. There we go. You know, and that'll be good. <laughs> um, so as far as uh, our weekly catch-up and housekeeping, there's not much to say, except for that we're, we're back and recording because we've yeah. had some time away. Uh, our last episode was just kind of us getting our thoughts and feelings about the uh, situation in the world and... Now we're back to talking Star Wars, mm-hmm. and hopefully exclusively Star Wars. Yeah. I'm sure we'll go on rants, but... <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, it, but it's good to be back. I, it feels actually really good to have like something to think about other than work every day. Yeah. It feels like there's some normalcy now, Yeah, even though you know the world's still a little different. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be different forever, I feel like. you know We're going to... Hopefully, there's going to be health precautions that are put into place that are long-lasting and not just during these... Uh, times of covid 19 so well i mean we did have a, the spanish flu in, in 1918 and uh things didn't continue after that so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> did they did our did our health uh, consciousness not get better after that no i wasn't around then so i don't really remember much well, I, I, so i ran into my aunt today which was another experience i we were both wearing masks standing six feet apart yeah um and i didn't get a hugger when we left but um she was telling me that she was reading up on like an or she saw an article about the anti-mask league and so Hmm. she's like oh what crazy people are these that are like anti-mask so she clicked on the article and it was about the history of the 1918 spanish flu and how there was an anti-mask league back then and they're still they're still kicking today yeah (laughs) secret organization exactly it's funny because most secret organizations wear masks where this one is (laughs) they're anti-mask anti-mask they want the, the public to know who they are um well, and, and as far as catch up, there's really nothing for me to talk about Star Wars related, uh, except for I guess my ongoing struggle of getting my Star Wars mm-hmm. office slash studio put together. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I take, you know, one step forward and two steps back in here. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know that eventually when you get this all set up, it's going to look like uh, Kylo Ren's little trinket room. Yeah. Um, but right now it looks a little bit like the trash compactor. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> it, it's kind of like the inside of a sand crawler where things are just kind of yes. like laying around, wires sticking out. Um, yeah, I guess. The only other thing that really happened to me this week is I totally biffed it. Uh, I don't know if yeah, you see this big old oh, scar. <laughs> you're missing an elbow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And my shoulder is just completely messed up. Like, I can't lift anything more than five pounds with his arm. Oh, wow. Yeah. What were uh, you doing? So my brother-in-law bought an electric longboard. Oh. And it's crazy fun. Yeah. And uh, fast. Yeah. You know, even in my age, you still try to show off for girls. Oh, I've been married age. to my wife for five years now, <laughs> and uh, I was trying to show off for her. And I tried stopping way too soon and uh, launched myself. And I caught myself at, like, a nice running pace, but I was wearing Crocs, <laughs> which is a great, you know, footwear for riding a longboard. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You were wearing Crocs while trying to be impressive at the exactly. same time. Exactly. Yeah, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it takes a special skill to do that. But yeah, with sweaty feet and Crocs, it didn't help. And I slipped right out of them and uh, came rolling down onto the hard asphalt. So it's been a fun couple of days <laughs> trying to recover from that. Man. Yeah. Um, what about you? Did you do anything Star Wars related or anywise, otherwise? No. Yeah. Not at all. Just um, worked. <laughs> I've got my, yeah, just honestly, like hours and hours of work every day. But um, I've gotten my son into Avatar The Last Airbender. Oh, nice. So he's six years old and super excited about Aang. He's the only name that he can remember. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, And then just, yeah, he wants to be, a, I think he said he wants to be an airbender. So yeah. for, for Halloween or just in general? No, just in general. Oh, sweet. Yeah. No, for Halloween, he's actually, this is another topic. He actually uh, has come up with his costume for Halloween. Uh-huh. He's going to have a thousand eyes on his oh. face, two tentacles on his shoulder, four arms, and a tail and a giant pen. Wow, you've got your work cut out <laughs> I for you. Know. So I'm building my Garandan costume, <laughs> and now I've got to get to work on this thing. Well, everyone knows that Garandans always travel with a pet uh, 
thousand eyed tentacle tail creature with a pen with a pen <laughs> like <laughs> to, a three foot long pen. right they got to write down all your secret you know exactly. spy stuff for you <laughs> yep. just tell him you draw it and i'll make it <laughs> yeah, he drew it oh sweet yeah okay <laughs> i gotta see this costume yeah if there's any trick-or-treating this year he might just be <laughs> we'll just throw candy at, at the kids there you go like draw a line of, on, of chalk on your sidewalk and don't cross this line and we'll just throw it at you <laughs> make a nice target practice yeah uh, well, um, let's go ahead and uh, break into our news. First, we'll do our little intro clip. Punch it. Shall we punch it? Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. Okay, that was our intro clip. There's, there's <laughs> actually a new punch it. A new punch it. Yeah. What? What was I, I was watching something Star Wars related, and they said punch it. I vaguely remember that recently too, actually. It's very recently, and, and I, I thought that's perfect. We need to put that in the intro. I think I remember thinking the same thing, and now I don't remember what it was. If uh, we remember, then they just saw it. But was it? Yeah, we forgot. Well, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to splice it into our intro. What's the? Um, is it the Star Wars Temple? Have you? Did oh, you watch that? That's it. I okay, think that's where it's because that's the in. only new Star Wars I've seen in the yes. last like you know two weeks. So. Yes, I think that's it. I think there's a punch it in there. Okay, yeah, I'll have to check that out. We can add that to our our little punch it montage. Yeah. Um. So the first bit of news is pretty sad in my opinion. Uh, I don't know if you care because I don't think you've were planning on this, but uh, they oh. finally announced that the Star Wars celebration for Anaheim 2020 is officially canceled. I was a little sad because yeah. I was thinking I might go. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, and even if you don't go like physically in person, it's yeah. still fun it if you awesome. go to, uh, I think Force Center coined the pr- uh, phrase CouchCon, where you <laughs> stay at home and watch all the panels and you you know yeah. get all the news and stuff. But yeah, not happening this year. I guess they've pushed it back. Well, they said they pushed it back until... Um, 2022 that that was the part i was kind of sad about i I figured i wasn't gonna go this year but i I was surprised that they pushed it back two years well and they were always planning on doing one in 2022 i believe Uh um do they not do it every year no they so they have done it like in odd years in the past okay um but they didn't this or yeah i I was actually surprised they were gonna do one this year when they announced it last year um because they try to do them like when there's a release of a new movie so there's no new movie coming out this year. So what does that mean for 2022? Well, they announced that in 2022, 24, and 26, they'll be releasing new movies. Um, this was a while ago. They were saying, like, they'll do an Avatar in the odd years and then a Star Wars in the even years. Wait, does Lucasfilm do yeah, they Avatar? Yeah, they own Avatar. Oh, not Lucasfilm, but Disney. Disney does. Yeah. 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 So they, they don't want to compete with themselves during Christmas. That's a whole other topic. The, yeah. the whole Avatar <laughs> franchise that they keep talking about but and it's like a big deal to them like it's a huge property but there's only the one movie yeah like the way that they yeah build it up i wouldn't call it a franchise no it's like not a <laughs> franchise yet. there's one movie but they have like the whole uh disneyland land they have a whole franchise built around it but it's still just like a single movie yeah they're super it's excited weird. about this one thing it's like who's pocahontas of blue people like yeah <laughs> and it makes it confusing when you ask someone if they've seen an avatar and you're yeah. talking about the last airbender and they always ask oh with the blue people and like, but right now i mean the only avatar is avatar the last airbender yeah okay well i do want to talk about this for a, a brief second you know this is off topic um so yeah as i told you last week i don't know if you remember dave filoni was is yeah. uh part of avatar the last airbender yep. so i've been rewatching it as well mm-hmm. um and i'll always like pay attention to the credits to see yep. which one he directed and I noticed that all the good ones are Dave Filoni. And then, like, one that I don't like so much, I'm like, oh, is this a Dave episode? And then it's not. I'm like, oh. oh. Yep. <laughs> not that there's much bad Avatar out there. Right. But, like, the one that comes to mind is The Great Divide. I don't know if you remember that episode. I'm not that far into it yet. Oh, okay. I've never seen the whole thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Ooh. So you're in season one? Yeah. Book okay. one. Book one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Book one. I do know. I, I mean, I'm on the internet enough to know that Zuko isn't bad forever. Yeah. And. That's Big spoiler it. alert there, guys. Oh, no, I was kidding. If you're on the internet at all, <laughs> yeah, you're everyone know that. Everyone has seen yeah. Avatar, I feel like, or is currently. I've just seen pictures of Zuko and he's not angry. Yeah. And he's got so his you hair know. Back, so I know that he's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, yeah, he has kind of a Kylo Ren arc, but. Oh, okay. It's. But better? Yeah. Sorry, guys. But it, it is. Zuko's arc is better. 
Uh, but it's because it's more fleshed out, right? You've yeah. got three seasons of a character. And uh, I think Kylo really needed an Uncle Iroh. He didn't really. He had kind of an he Uncle Luke, an but Uncle. he wasn't around as much. So. Okay, so this is something that really hit me this week. Uh, uh, obviously through memes is the way that I get my news and my my thoughts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I saw a meme that was like uh, Luke Skywalker in the original trilogy is like, oh, Father, I you know I know that there's still good in you even after you've killed who knows how many people and yeah. done so many horrendous things, and then Luke in the sequel trilogy is like, oh my nephew had a bad dream, I'm yeah. gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I I do excuse that more than some people do. Like I mean, obviously I'm still able to poke fun at it yeah. because Star Wars you should be able to poke fun at. Yes. Um, but yeah, I I look at that and people get so caught up on that mm-hmm. that they're like, oh, you've ruined Luke because he didn't uh, have faith in somebody. It's like, yeah, people people, people break change. and they change and they get jaded. Like, yeah. I had a lot of faith just in myself, like when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to rule this world. Like, yeah. not literally, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then as you get into your, you know, mid to late 20s, you're like, oh, man, if I could get a job that could pay my mortgage, yeah. I'd just be happy with that. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So you get a little bit more jaded as you grow old, but, um, well, especially when you're got so much pressure on you. Uh, yeah. I mean, Aang felt that a little bit, even, in, mm-hmm. uh, you know, later on, he's so much pressure on him. I mean, that's why he ran away in the beginning, yeah. uh, and, and got frozen in the ice is cause he yeah. pulled Luke Skywalker and was like, whew, I can't handle all this. I will say that he's in, in so far in book one, he's handling the pressure pretty well. Like, um, I, I keep thinking he's going to be like, no, I can't do this. It's too much. But yeah. he hasn't done that so far. The, he struggles with it a little bit more as you go because, mm-hmm. you know, he's kind of burying it. He's he's a very happy person, yeah. but you know inside it's like, oh, I've got so much weight on my shoulders. Yeah. So anyways, enough of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender talk. Um, yeah, I guess as far as celebration goes, I just want to say that I'm sad that we're pushing mm-hmm. it back so long. Yeah. They, they really did. They said the word postpone, I think, but they really just canceled it they did i mean it does say canceled but then they're like we're pushing it to 2022 it's like well you already had that uh established so Mm -hmm. but i guess we didn't know it was going to be in anaheim necessarily yeah oh well i guess more uh information on that will come at d23 in 2021 so in a year we'll find out (laughs) what's happening in the next year so next little bit of news here um is a rumor uh, upcoming Hasbro Black Series figures uh, focusing on Clone Wars Season 7, mm-hmm. and specifically the Seas of, of Mandalore arc. Oh, okay. So, again, this is just a rumor. Um, nobody's confirmed this, but uh, a lot of people are speculating um, due to just verbiage and stuff used on you know Hasbro website and stuff. That what, what new stuff would that bring? Because we already have an Ahsoka Black Series. We have a Rebels Ahsoka Black Series, oh, okay. which is elusive, like... Yeah. I want that one so bad, and they're so expensive on eBay, and you can't mm-hmm. find them anywhere. And I think they're re-releasing them with the oh, new okay. Rebels line, cool. you know? But that's already sold out in pre-order. Oh. So um, here in uh, Fan X in Utah, which is like our Comic-Con, um, which is still scheduled to happen in September. Yeah. I'm hopefully... planning on going. I need to buy okay. my tickets. Good, yeah. Uh, we might have extra for you because we oh. have vendor booth, so they give oh. us like a bunch of tickets. So, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll let you know, and I'll talk to Jess. But... Um, but Ashley Eckstein, the voice of Ahsoka, uh-huh. is coming to do that. And so I really wanted to sign a figure, and I can't find an Ahsoka figure anywhere that's not like, you know, $70 or right. something like that. So You have, you have that one. Oh, no, that's Hera. No, yeah, that's, that's Hera. Hera. Yeah, I've Oops. got Hera, and that one's signed already by Vanessa Marshall. And then I've got oh, okay. um, Kane in there signed by Freddie Prince Jr. So, yeah, that'll be a nice nice addition but apparently the new one that's being rumored is episode or i mean season seven clone wars ahsoka which is a little younger yeah younger. different costume yep um, different lightsabers so mm-hmm. and then my guess would be um you know some death watch or not death watch um the owls uh, oh yeah what what do they end up calling it was it overwatch i can't, I can't remember. <laughs> overwatch. overwatch that's a video game um but yeah uh bo katan and cool. uh um sabine's mom and then what about, um, oh, what's Sabine's mom name? I forgot her I'm name. I'm forgetting right now as well. I could have just plastered over that and help, helped you transition. <laughs> and but then boom, you just <laughs> had to call me back. out. Uh, I don't remember either, so it's not Ursa like, Wren, there we Ursa go. Ursa Wren. Yeah. That's right, because it's like a bear. 
Yeah. I remember thinking that. Oh, yeah. And, Ursa. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, you like bears. I love bears, man. That's... And wren is something, too, I think. I'll have to look into it's like that. It's a bird, I think. Um, what was I about to say? Oh, um, do you think they'll also have um, Ahsoka Trooper? That'd be cool. Oh, probably. Black Series. That Ahsoka actually Trooper. is a good point. Yeah, they'll probably have an Ahsoka Trooper. Um, and maybe what people were calling Maldalorians. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'd so that cool. could be pretty cool with the yellow visor yeah, and the paint and everything. So, That's yeah, there's cool. a there's actually quite a bit they can do. Mm-hmm. Um, or even a Black Series Maul where he's got the um, robot, robot legs. legs. Yeah, I don't think they've done one of those yet. So mm-hmm. that could be fun. Hopefully that's the new deal. The next bit of news is kind of in relation to um, uh, toy rumors. Well, I guess mm-hmm. this one's confirmed, isn't it? This is the one that you yeah. were bringing up uh, earlier, which is the Legos. Yep. So uh, a while ago now, we're kind of late on this news, but they announced the late summer 2020 Star Wars Lego sets. Um just out of the gate i'm a little bit disappointed there's some cool stuff in here yeah but i'm a little bit disappointed i'll let you i'll, I'll tell you why okay let's see um, yeah tell, tell us the lineup here so uh first off is anakin's jedi interceptor from episode three no revenge of the sith um it's a re-release so this one had come out earlier but it's kind of like a, a refined re-release of the right one. So remastered cool. edition <laughs> yeah. special edition lego yeah. <laughs> exactly uh and i do like these because they're kind of like the two scale mm-hmm. ones where the minifigure like it's two scale to the minifigure which is pretty cool so my question is how do they work the droid because in the actual jedi starfighter the droid doesn't fit in yeah. the starfighter so like i'm seeing that there's a is it r2 yeah, i'm R2. guessing yep. do you have to take off his head and put it on the wing it doesn't look like it does he actually fit it looks like he actually fits interesting they found yeah. a workaround because yeah he didn't fit in the in the screen used model was that the one no it's the uh the naboo starfighter where they also both of them yeah neither one of them fit, yeah. makes sense to have an astromech droid in there <laughs> just the head sticking out that's awesome um the next one is the uh armored assault tank the aat um so are these all cool. prequel stuff or not all of them just alone um we'll have to see i don't remember them all but this one's cool everyone's pretty excited about this one because it comes with ahsoka oh uh which is it's not the first time that she's come out but um it's like the updated version of ahsoka i do remember who was it that was telling me about maybe this was you that was telling me about it um how people are a little upset oh you know i think it was my friend calvin Mm -hmm. um who was like a lego know-it-all like he okay sounds negative but he (laughs) he knows everything about lego he was uh in one of our bonus episodes um talking about the atst raider when we built that together but um he was saying how some of the people in lego community were actually disappointed that this one comes with ahsoka because ahsoka right now is just like her black series of figure is like this elusive minifig that's very rare and so people who have it are kind of bummed because it brings the rarity down right. that it's being released again. So Well, I mean, you still have the, the – I wonder if they're different or if they look identical. It's like almost impossible to tell them apart. Yeah, if there's a different paint job or whatever, yeah, yeah I'm sure that will still you know keep the rarity of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also comes with – I think this is the first time they've released the, um, the clone trooper, the Ahsoka clone trooper. Oh, is it come with a Ahsoka yeah. clone? Oh, yeah, look at that. So that's pretty cool. And then as well as two uh, battle droids. Hmm. Oh, it even has the Ahsoka clone in the corner as like the yeah. marketing picture. Interesting. Yep. Um, the next one, I don't... This, this is a whole other discussion. So this is the <laughs> Knights of Ren transport ship, mm. which you see for like a, a blip. second in uh, the Rise of Skywalker. And okay, so here's my take. I'm okay with making obscure toys and figures out of right. things you barely see on screen because that's what, you know, the 90s thrived on. Yeah. And, and then, you know, later on, even in the prequels, we got stuff like that, which is great. I'm all for it. However, I feel like the Knights of Rend as a concept in general yes. are such a letdown yes. that people are like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> that's where I'm falling because, like, um, the even the Jenner toys had the few seconds of, of like, a uh, long or what are they what are they called camel face and you know, oh, like the, the jenner toys the Gen- kenner kenner yeah <laughs> saying, not not kendall no Ken- but like prune face i've the, got the a kendall prune jenner. face from 1983 no the yeah. kendall jenner toys. Ken- kendall jenner toys <laughs> the kenner toys the has gosh. been he- kenner kendall gender <laughs> yeah. yeah right yeah prune face and things like those, those are yeah. like super background characters you barely right. see them in the hammerhead film. yeah yeah but but you still like you still have the toy and i'm so i'm fine with that but I, yeah i think uh what i'm always disappointed in 
is the fact that the Knights of Ren like were marketed since 2015 yeah or whenever the first film came out and they are nothing like they are a nothing thing in the star wars universe but they still are marketed and talked about and we're still getting toys of them yeah and i mean you can say the thing same thing with boba but i don't know why but it's just like different with boba fett like it's different they were like you know the toy came out before you know everyone was so excited he was hyped up um but then he was kind of a, a nothing in the movie, which I guess is different because he wasn't hyped up in the movie. Knights of Ren were spoken about in the movie. Yeah. Um, and then kind they're of teased like out later on. Yeah. And they were in Visions. And then he's like, oh, a handful of my students went with Kylo Ren. And you're like, oh, those are the Knights of Ren. Right. But then it turned out to be somebody he found in a comic book that joined him. Yeah. Did you read that? No. Or? What? So the Knights of Ren are not Luke's ex-students. Um, they're a group of knights that were with uh, a different Wren. Um, what? Yeah. So what's a Wren? So Wren was the name of like this dark side master who Kylo and Snoke fought and defeated. And so because he defeated them, the knights of Wren like joined up with Kylo and he took on the name of Wren. But it's not in the movie. It's <laughs> not in the movie, no. <laughs> it's in a comic book. What? <laughs> See, I didn't even know that. I try to keep up on comic books, at least like the major things, but uh that's that's crazy yeah it's just crazy so i yeah i i think that's yeah part of the reason why i'm not super excited about this set yeah. like i love max rebo is like one of my favorite characters right. and it's because and garn dan's mine right like, just a small little character who reminds me of my favorite scene in star wars which yeah. is jabba's palace you know yeah. and i'm sure you love episode one in tatooine and i love the cantina scene in the cantina and garn dan is yeah right there alongside them so Huh. Well, what are the other stats we got here? Yeah, so let's cruise through these. Um, lots of that. And then you get uh, Grievous's Starfighter. That's a design I've always liked that I thought was kind of underrated. I don't remember seeing it in the films. Really? Is it, is it in there? Yeah, it's got like these two big, oh, I mean, you're looking at the Lego yeah. version, but these two big like turbo engines on the side. It's kind of pod racy. Kind of, but when you see it in the film, it's very muscle car like. Oh, like it looks like an old charger or something. And Does I think it... that was George Lucas's inspiration because okay. he's such a car guy, you know. Mm-hmm. I I can like, I don't know what it sounds like in the movie, but I can almost hear like the oh yeah like the pistons firing. On that yeah, thing. it's it's very much it's the ship that um, Obi Wan uses to escape Utapal. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, because it comes with uh, Grievous. Um, and Obi Wan. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, and an airborne a... clone trooper. Oh, okay. I was like, That's was that B one cool. maybe? No. But yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then you have a couple more re releases, uh, re release of the Death Star Final Duel, mm. um, which is that's a playset rather than it's like, a playset, yeah. yeah. And that's where like the Emperor sitting up in his throne and watching Vader and Luke fight. I do remember seeing it on Instagram and thinking that actually looked pretty cool. It oh. looked more like the Force uh, Unleashed video game version of the throne room oh, okay. than the actual screen used one. So the, the playset is basically the same as the previous version. Um, they just updated a few features. Yeah, better minifigs. The paint's a lot better on newer sets usually. Yeah. Um, and for some reason my phone's not loading, but the Resistance ITS transport. Oh, okay. Which is I not see. a ship I super remember. Oh, it's Try, like, oh, there we go. It's like the, what are those called? The Hammerhead? No, it's almost like... Oh, it's the Blockade Runner, basically. Yeah, block, but it's a small version of the Blockade yeah. Runner. This is in Episode Nine as well? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's it's much smaller than the real Blockade Runner. Yeah. And um, that just comes with some New Republic? Yeah, I, I'm sure they have names. Um, it, oh, it's a... Uh, it's, this is... Everyone's kind of excited about this one because it's actually a Galaxy's Edge... Uh, Oh, Lego set. okay. So does it come with? Because I you it showed that um, that person of color there, yep. and I I, I forget her name. Tips. V Morati. Mor- Vi Morati. Yeah. Vimorati. Okay. I was like, I saw the blue hair, and and she's. I do know that the main character in that is like a person of color resistance spy, uh-huh. and so I was like, who? I don't remember that character from the movies, but yeah, yeah, that's so, sweet. I actually, uh, yeah. from what I've heard of Vi Morati, she sounds really cool. Okay. So I'm excited that they're turning her into merchandise. Yeah. I, I I'm still need to go to Galaxy's Edge. It's on my bucket list, but yeah. Uh, and then you also get Lieutenant Beck, who's um, a Mon Calamari. Oh, okay. As well as a Gonk Droid and an Astromech. So that's, that's gonk, pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't mind the set. It's a pretty fun little set. Yeah, I love the Lego mold of the heads for Mon Cal or Mon Calamari. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. Yeah, I then, have the Radis one. 
uh, ultimately, um, the last one is the advent calendar that's coming out around Christmas. Oh, yeah. I and never got those in the past. They're kind of weird because yeah. they're not like a playset. Each day, I think you open up, and most of the days you don't get much, but there's like a there's like four or five minifigures in there. Yeah. A couple little set pieces. The minifigs is what I'd be interested in, or like they make like little tiny vehicles too. But you collect the um, the micro series. That's right? why that's why I'm disappointed. It's in like this the release. micro micro. <laughs> well, they're they're called the the micro fighters. Yeah. Um, and I collected. I, I I'm not a completionist, so I don't have all of them. But yeah. I've collected all the ones that are cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ones you like, and yeah. that's how sh- collecting should be. Yeah. Collect the ones you like. Um, so th- I'm a little bit disappointed that uh, they don't have any new micro fighters. But there are there are some cool um, stuff in the advent calendar. There's like the Vader in a Christmas sweater with a Death Star. Oh, okay. A little Death Star print I on. I think his. I remember seeing these and thinking, I want those sweaters in real life. <laughs> yeah, and then there's a bunch of like kind of tiny things like you get the cast the oh um, little Vader's Mu- castle, Mustafar Vader's castle, um, one of those uh, separatists. Yeah, that was the first thing that jumped stations. out at me is the Federation blockade ships. Mm-hmm. Those are so, pretty cool. There's but they're like made out of five pieces so yeah it's kind of cool but um nothing i I don't think i'd spend the 50 bucks to get it yeah i i follow a lot of like lego builders on instagram Mm -hmm. and every year when those advent comes calendars come out they do like each day they like show what it is and i like following those it's fun because like oh i gotta open along with but i don't have to spend the 30 or 40 dollars it's it's ridiculously expensive i don't know why it's so so much yeah let me see what it actually is this is yeah it's, it's way too much for what you get i think i think yeah. Well, while you're looking that up, let's go ahead and uh, move into the next story, which is another rumor here. Um, uh, this is a, these stories where you get from Star Wars Newsnet, which is one of the best uh, sites out there to get your Star Wars information. Well, actually, the best place to get Star Wars information is the Behind the Real podcast. Well, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, that's one of the, yeah, the weirder places to get it, I guess. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so an animated spin-off series is rumored um, to uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars uh, and might be in development here. So um, what basically what this article was talking about mm. was um, that there's been a rumor that they're going to create a show that takes place between the last season of um, Clone Wars and the last season of Rebels, which oh. that's cool. So basically and, during Rebels? It, Bef- well, between Rebels and before Clone the Wars. first season, before the first season, oh, of Rebels. you said before the last season of Rebels. Oh, did I? Which oh, is just all yeah. of Rebels. That's also all Rebels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my bad. Um, but it's interesting to me because what I want to see first, obviously, is what happens after Rebels with you know Ahsoka and mm-hmm. um, Sabine going to find Ezra yeah. and Thrawn, uh, and we might get a little bit of that in the Mandalorian, but I'm kind of would like yeah. to see a full fleshed out animated series. Now, the term in development is interesting to me because mm-hmm. that could mean from, oh, we've talked about it to we've got scripts to we've hired people. To, you know what I mean? It could be all over the board. So this could be something that we're just getting in three to four years. Or well, I, I will say, so I read, I was reading up a little bit on Star Wars today while I was listening to boring conference calls. And I, I found a forum from 2005 um, talking about, oh, George Lucas has... Is, is coming back. He's going to make a full-fledged series based off of the Clone Wars animated shorts on Cartoon Network because this was before... The oh, Clone, okay. Like, I see. This was when uh, there were just a few shorts out. And Sorry, I, it series. didn't register. You said 2005, and I was like, wait, George Lucas is coming back? <laughs> okay, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and that in development, there's a live-action Star Wars show. Which we know now is 1313. Was yeah. The, yeah, premise, yeah. So whenever I hear in development, I like... It could be nothing. Right. Um, it could be amazing and coming soon, or it could be amazing and coming in five years. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so much stuff in development. It doesn't yeah. necessarily mean it's greenlit. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I just want to talk about it for a bit because it's like, what would that show be about? Just Rex and Ahsoka trying to avoid the Empire before they become, you know, she becomes, uh, um, I can't think of the name now. I have all the Star Wars information until I go to record a podcast, and then it just all escapes Pivot. me. Yeah. Fulcrum. Fulcrum, that's what it is. Fulcrum. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Vortex? Is that right? No. Agent Vortex? Let's, let's see how many synonyms we can think yeah. of for Fulcrum. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, it could talk about her becoming Fulcrum, and at some point, she has to split apart from 
um, Rex. Yeah. You know, and he goes off and finds Wolf and... And they just live on a sand crawl. No, it's not a sand No, it's the old... Uh, AT... It's the predecessor to the AT. ATTE? Uh, I think so. That just came into my head. I don't know if it's right. I, just, I trust it. It's my guy. Ultrain troop. Yeah. They're probably <laughs> that. There's so many. There's so many A T T T A T E G L. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I, I will say that uh, the Lucasfilm writers are pretty good about just slotting in adventures, mm-hmm. like, like, kind of like side quests, um, between major story points. Because like, look at all the comic books. Those have those fit in like sometimes very narrow timelines. Yeah. But they have like little fun one-off adventures. And so, sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. Yeah. Because to me, what kind of bugs me about some of those comics, and I, I just kind of view comics as a lesser canon in general, mm. is how it's like they'll get to these things that are like such big, aha, shocking, or like save the galaxy moments. And you're yeah. like, well, that happened between the movies. Like, yeah. why didn't we see, you know? <laughs> the one that I always think of is the uh, the Chewbacca comic series, mm. where I don't think you've, you you said that you have not read it, which is surprising because you I've read, are a Chewie fan. Yeah, I've read supplementary material around it, so I tried reading the main line, mm-hmm. and I think they cross over, because does he fight Black uh, it's Black K- Kajara Jan or something? I can never pronounce his name because it's like almost complete Shri Wook. Um, okay, so maybe it's a different series, because yeah. there is one where he fights another Wookiee, which is like this big black furred Wookiee. Oh, with the dread, like mm-hmm. he's got dreadlocks with like beads in them. And like spikes on his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was in the Chewy comic. Because it's interesting because a lot of the comics like overlap huh. um, where like you'll see it from one point of view in yeah. the main line and then you'll see it just from that character's view. And, you know, they did that like I think with Kenobi and um, Afra and Vader. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, the, well yeah. Uh, the one that I, I'm thinking of is he just goes and has like, he saves a, a village that was forced into mining. Like, mm. they, like the empire came in, forced the entire village to be, basically become slaves and mine um, until they died. Like just force them to work until they died. And so he goes in and kind of like helps them. Uh, I can't remember if he completely kicks the empire out or if, or if he just kind of helps a few of them. Kind of like when you get Kessel. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and so that was a good story because like it wasn't galaxy changing, but right. it was like it kind of showed who Chewie was. Yeah. And, and Han Solo wasn't anywhere. It was like him just by himself doing some good, and it was kind of fun. And that's the kind of comics I really like when it's character building. Like I yeah. really do like the ones that have to do with Kenobi, and that's why I'm excited for the Kenobi series, yeah. which we'll talk about in a little bit because they have you know these these little adventures where he just like you know takes out a couple of thugs that are picking on the local farmers or he's you know writing in his journal or luke finds his journal you know when he goes back to tatooine and Mm. all this stuff that's cool i didn't know about that part oh yeah you'll have to read those okay one thing i don't like about that though it's another tangent they show vader going back to tatooine and talking to um he has a conversation with both uh boba fett and um with jabba so he's like trying to work together with Jabba while he's on Tatooine. Isn't the whole point that he doesn't want to go back to Tatooine? Right. That's like why it was kind of a, a little annoying is because the reason, you know, we kind of, because in our minds, we all kind of thought like, why would you hide your his son on the planet he's from with his family and keep his last name Skywalker? Yeah. It's because Luke, Lucas didn't really think that all out. I mean, he kind of right. made this as he went and it, and it worked really well. But in our headcanon, we're kind of like, oh, well. He that's the one place he'll never go back, yeah. right? Like, he hates that place. It's just bad memories. Yeah, that's you know? where his mother died. That's where he was born in slavery. Exactly. He yep. hates sand. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so why would he want to go back? And then he goes back, and he does have a little disdain for the place, you know? Mm. And he's like, tells that to Jabba. But it's like, oh, that doesn't make a lot of sense no. that he would. Yeah. Huh. They but, broke our head cannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and there's also, you know, comics of... Luke doing like incredible things long before he ever even heard of the Force and oh really yeah so it, I mean some of it works like I said you can't be too picky with yeah. with comics I have to view it as a lesser canon well if in in regular comics like superhero comics you kind of have to just read each comic as its own thing mm-hmm. anyway like yeah. you can't try and keep everything straight because it's way too they're way too convoluted like that's comic books are the soap operas for nerds mm-hmm. uh just like wrestling is a soap opera for jocks <laughs> oh yeah that makes a lot of sense and i've actually found that out so um a little, a little unrelated news uh so 
I told you how the guy that shares his house with me uh, mm-hmm. is an artist, right? Yeah. And he's really into comic book artists, and that's okay. kind of what he wants to do. Oh, so cool. him and I have been in collaboration uh, with a comic book. Um, so, you know, stay tuned for that. Maybe in the next, you know, two or three years. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but uh, we, we've been kind of collaborating together. And I found, yeah, that the writing is very different. I'm used yeah. to screenwriting. Um, and that's kind of how I've been going about it because I was like, I don't know how to write in a comic format. So I've been writing screenplays of what I is like mm. I want to happen. And then um, I've been trying to translate it to panels, which has been very interesting. You do have to be very over the top in yeah. both your dialogue and your action. Yeah. And, you know, there's not subtle things because I don't have control of a camera. You know, right. I can't have a character like give me a look that tells me everything yeah. because – you don't want to waste a panel on something like that. Like, I mean, you can, but see, and I've written short stories and now I'm trying to think of like how I would translate the comic book writing and you couldn't have any, it's, it's not quite writing because it's, and you can have subtle you, narration, but you don't want to narrate the whole time. Right. Like, and you can't have too much like internal dialogue either. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit more akin to film. Sure. But it's still not film. You don't have a use of music. You don't have the use That's of camera cool. movement. Yeah, it's. it's so. I didn't realize how independent comic book is. is That's just like its own genre. Very it's, independent. Yeah. yeah. So crazy. I'm, I'm finding that out fast and hard. So. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Cool. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the comic that we make, you know, ends up pretty good. But. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not going to talk much more about what it is because it's still very early in development, which it's is a term IP, we like, like today. Yeah, what? It's your own IP. Like it's. Yeah, yeah, not really mine. It's the artist kind of came up with the the world and the scenario, and I'm kind of helping. But it's not like a fanfic of something else. No, no, it's not Star Wars or you know fantasy related. It's it's completely independent. That's cool. So, yeah, that'll be fun. I have a coworker whose uh, husband quit his job and is now a full time comic book writer. Hmm. He's not an artist. He just writes them. And yeah. He has like a guy in Brazil that draws them for him. Hmm. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I can't draw to save my life. No. Like, stick figures is about <laughs> it. So, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, the, the guy who I've got that's an artist is has some really good ideas, and he kind of created this whole world. Um, but, you know, he, I've taken a lot of writing classes, and mm-hmm. so, like, I'm helping him out there. And so, you know. We're... If you ever want to write short stories, that's that's the only medium that I've ever dabbled in. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I think I could I could do that, but... It's like if I'm gonna sit down and write something, it should probably be a script. Seeing that I'm going into film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so the next story here, as we ramble on, is uh, Ewan McGregor confirms Kenobi, the Disney Plus series, will use the same visual effects technology featured in the Mandalorian, um, which we've learned quite a bit about in the Mandalorian documentary series, mm-hmm. uh, which I've really enjoyed. And Preston, I know you've enjoyed as yeah. well. Yep. We're actually gonna do a full episode talking about those eight episodes. Um, once we are all caught up on them, but next week, <laughs> next stay week. tuned. Next week, next week. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of good news, yeah. I guess. I mean, one, it confirms that Kenobi is still happening because uh, it's getting pushed back further and further because of Corona and. They just other need to stop messing with my emotions on this one. I know, it's I the just, one I want more than anything. Just give me a date. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, and I, they keep toying I, with us. Yeah. So I need a date. I need some. I need a picture of you. you, you Ewan McGregor. I can't. I can't talk. Ewan McGregor. I need a picture of Kenobi. Yeah, Ewan McGregor. <laughs> yeah, him. I need just. A, I just need a picture of him in costume. That's all I need. Yeah. Well, and I read it earlier today. This wasn't really a news story, but that he is more excited for this, and he thinks he's gonna like this better than he liked the prequels. Like he prefers this to the prequels. So. Well, it's it's gonna be a very different Set. environment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like a bunch of green screen. Exactly. He had acts to all blue and green screen, where yeah. this he has the volume. Right. Which we saw Tatooine in The Mandalorian, and yeah. it looked awesome. It did. So. I still, I'm just getting like visions of him in the little speeder, like yeah. dancing around <laughs> those gifts from behind the That's scenes. That's my like, favorite gift, yeah. yeah. No, so that should be good. Yeah. Um, and then the last kind of, these are three stories that are all connected and kind of our main topic today, uh, even though we've rambled on for the news forever. <laughs> we're like, we're like three fourths of the way through, and now we're getting to the main topic. Uh, well, I mean, this is still a news story, so today is just kind of a news day. We haven't done news in so long, um, but uh, well, it's, we're going to be talking about Star Wars Squadron. Sorry, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say this is like a continuation of the first day that we met. Like yeah. we just have had the same conversation nonstop since yeah. the first day we met. Exactly. And we just rambled on it that that day, and we just keep on rambling. Keep on. doing it ever since. Uh, yeah. That's how I know you make a good podcast exactly. partner because yeah, <laughs> we're like. 
you came in to buy a suit. We're now hour two, and we've been talking Star Wars this whole yeah. time. Oops. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you notice the bubble? <laughs> yeah. How did I know? How did we get talking about Star Wars? Did you have like I think like it's because or something? I I was wearing. Yeah, I don't know. I was probably wearing something Star Wars. You but had something Star Wars. I, on. I remember I suggested getting a pocket watch for the vest. Oh, that's what it was. And you told me about I your Millennium you. Falcon pocket yep. watch. And I was like, oh, I'm a Star Wars fan too. Look at my phone case. And then it was like, boom. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Huge conversation. So, um, But yeah, Star Wars Squadron's Star Wars. official trailer came out. And it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Do you want to talk about just that first one? It was released like right after we recorded the last episode yeah. that we did. So this is kind of late news for a lot of you as well. Um, but just your initial thoughts from that first trailer. Um, well, like I, I think I told you before, I, I've got some ideas. The first thing that came to me was I, I had a thought about its development cycle, mm-hmm. uh, but we can talk about that later. So you can as talk far about as it now like, if you want to. Well, I'll give you my impressions first. Okay. Is it was It was cool. I was excited for just... Cause I wasn't a big fan of like the Battlefront Two Starfighter game modes, but this looked different. Yeah, this looked different enough um, that I'm excited. Oh, and it's all first person. That's true. From what I can tell, like I you, didn't see any like third. Per- like you might be able to, but it maybe. didn't show any in the right. in the gameplay, which we'll get to. Yeah. So the first impression was um, it's cool that you get to play on both sides. You get to be a part of the uh, rebellion and. Uh, the the empire and the setting is very cool too i really yeah. i want to see more content of uh post death star 2 uh stuff what's interesting and what stood out to me and i don't know if this was in the first um trailer or the gameplay trailer that's the next bit of news is the is the game pay, gameplay trailer uh, which we'll talk about as well but um what stood out to me is they said the empire and the new republic which to me was like, okay, does this mean this is set after the second Death Star battle? Uh-huh. So it's the same place as we got the main campaign for Battlefront 2. Yes. Which was like, you know, Operation Cinder and all that. Yep. So to me, it's like, okay, did they just, because they stopped updating Battlefront 2, you know, uh, <laughs> squadron or uh, the starfighter, starfighter mode, mode. Yeah. so are they just taking that and then ripping it and then they reskinned it and made it much better and said okay here's what the game should have been yeah. and now it's its own thing kind of seems what it kind of seems that it's that way so that that was my point yeah. um is as soon as i saw that even just saw the name star uh star wars squadrons i was like oh and, and that it was being made by motive right who made the starfighter mode uh in battlefront 2 um I, I knew I, I have a feeling I know what happened. I mean, obviously this is just my speculation, but it feels like Battlefront Two launched right, and mm-hmm. it it flopped in a way. I don't think it flopped. I've enjoyed it since day one, but it got kind of reamed critically, um, and so I think like Dice had to keep going. They had they had to continue to support the multiplayer, um, or maybe they chose to. But I feel like Motive was like well, I'm out because <laughs> they didn't touch it. They launched it and didn't touch it ever again. I think maybe they did like one tweak to some balance changes really? and haven't touched it since. Hmm. So I'm thinking that they're like, well, we have all these assets, we have maps, we have stories, we have stuff, but I don't want to. we don't want to waste it on this game because it's already dead on arrival. And they poured all that energy, all the assets, and are like, okay, let's take the updates that we have already started on and just start fleshing those out into their full-fledged game. Yeah. Well, and kind of what you, when you said maps, it kind of, uh, you know, triggered a memory of watching mm-hmm. that trailer. And there's a moment, and I thought that it looked very familiar, when you see a Star Destroyer and it's, like, surrounded by asteroids, right? Yep. And it's almost identical from what I saw to that um, map, but it's the uh, First Order Star Destroyer, yeah. and it's surrounded by a bunch of asteroids. And it looks like the same map, and they just reskinned it to an Imperial Star mm-hmm. Destroyer. So Yeah, I can see that. That's interesting. Um, when the gameplay trailer came out, mm-hmm. there was, one, a lot of exciting things. Yep. Uh, first one being, you know, Hera Syndulla, yep. when she was talking to you directly. And I didn't notice Hera until, like, the second or third time watching the original trailer, um it doesn't really look like Hera to me just because i'm used to the rebels style yeah and so when i saw her she was much more realistic looking and it didn't immediately click in which trailer the first one because she was in all of them 
She was in both trailers. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't notice her until people pointed it out online. Right. That's when I noticed um, it too. And even when they, I saw the pictures online, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I had to... I just that, saw Twi'lek and I was like... The, yeah, the Twi'lek. And then the only thing that made it Hera to me and made me realize like, oh yeah, this is Hera, is her costume. Because mm-hmm. she's got her normal costume Her on. jumpsuit. and Yeah, yeah that's, she's a green Twi'lek, yeah. And then obviously it's Vanessa Marshall's voice in mm-hmm. the gameplay trailer. So that's really exciting. Um, and then the other thing that was really exciting to me that I didn't know until the gameplay trailer is that the whole game is going to be available on vr yeah yeah and you've got your oculus and i've got my oculus so i'm super pumped for that yeah yeah like legit get a fly an (laughs) x-wing i'm pumped to come over yeah you'll have to come play that (laughs) so um and then another thing that popped out to me that i'm excited for would be the character creation that's one of my favorite parts in video games in general is just to like create your own character put a little bit of yourself Mm -hmm. into that and then um, customization for your ships as well. Yeah. So. That, okay. Yeah. So with the announcement trailer, there wasn't much gameplay. You didn't. You just kind of got story beats, yeah. um, cutscenes, and the only thing. Uh, talking to my wife afterwards, she's like, "What do you want out of this game?" And I said, "The only thing I want is ship customization, mm-hmm. and I hope it's not uh, too much like Battlefront, which is like as you progress, you become stronger and stronger." Yeah. Um, and I hated that because I would go in trying to have a fun game and get blasted by these guys spent that spent like a hundred hours. Right. But I wanted like customization so you can tweak your abilities, you can swap one thing out for another, and neither one's better than the other, but they're like better in better in different situations or with different team comps, and that's what I wanted. And then uh, with the last trailer that they came out, the gameplay one, they announced that that's a thing, and they I think I even seen uh, saw a, a menu of all the different abilities. Right. And I'm like that's it. I'm that's so, what I'm, you want. I'm buy yeah. It. Yeah. Well, and I like that you can create your own ship. I mean, yep. you can't make design your own, but you can right. tweak, you know, the ones that are, that are there. And I like that much better than like, oh, we're just flying an X-Wing, and then if I get enough points, now I can fly Luke's X-Wing, or now yeah. I can fly, fly the Millennium Falcon. But here you can fly oh, a U-Wing, you can fly, yeah. you know, a couple different fighter options. Um, the A-Wing, which the is A-wing. The only, only... The only one you need. One you need yeah. <laughs> um, no, but I am excited for that U-Wing. That looks like fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is going to be a really cool game. And I'm the more I see, learn about it, the more pumped I get. Yeah. Well, and they had, um, they talked about the different types of ships. They had the fighter, the interceptor, and the bomber, mm-hmm. which is all the same as Battlefront 2. And then they had the support class, yeah. which is the U-Wing. And I forgot what the Empire side is, but I forget what it is cool. too. It's similar to the TIE Striker, but a little different. Yeah. It was, th- that was cool. An addition of a new class. Um, I always love playing support. Yeah. Uh, I like playing kind of like back of the field, help people, but not necessarily get my hands dirty. So I always do tank. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm excited to play the U-Wing. Obviously I'll try to be the little speedy interceptor just cause I love the A-Wing, but yeah, excited yeah. for that new class. Well, and it looks like you have a different, definitely a more of an advantage if you play as a squad like that's what this yes. whole thing is designed to be around so that'll be fun to you know log in and it's cross-platform so like mm-hmm. you and i can play uh you know maybe we can grab someone from our D D group or whatever you know yeah. make a little squad and just tear it up so yeah super fun i'm gonna have to buy a new xbox though oh the yeah the whatever the new unless it called. comes out on stadia hmm. so yeah, but yeah, my, my my original Xbox One isn't going to hold up, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, or because it's cross-platform, you could come over and one of us can be on the VR, the other one's on the Xbox. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you can play VR cross with others? I think so, yeah. I'm not 100% sure on that. So the VR sounded to me like it was going to be, like, I just assumed, maybe I just assumed it, but it I thought maybe it would just be like more of an experience. Mm-hmm. Like you get to fly around and like maybe have like your own little missions. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be like full-on multiplayer in VR? I hope so. That'd be awesome. Here's the other question I have. So you have, you know, like PlayStation has their own VR that hooks yeah. up to your PS console. Um, Oculus is a whole other can of worms. Yeah. So hopefully it comes out on there. I would assume it does because um, they're coming out with, you know, the new um, Galaxy's Edge on Oculus. Mm-hmm. They already have Vader Immortal. So Lucasfilm already has a relationship with Oculus. But yeah, I would I would say that if it was only going to be PSVR, they would have said that. Yeah. But they they just said VR. Right. Not not specifically PSVR. So I wonder if um, uh, ILMX Labs is involved oh. in this at all. Maybe yeah. they collaborated with Motive and. I just I'm trying yeah. to think of like what playing a multiplayer squad based game would be like in VR, and I I just don't know if you have the same Twitch you know yeah uh ability to to play as quickly as you could with mouse and keyboard or controller right 
Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how that'll play out. And I wonder, like, if I turn around, if I can see, like, the cushion, uh, you know, oh, behind my head or something. I would assume so. Yeah, yeah. just, like, look all around the cockpit. That'll be yeah. fun. Oh, that's that's exciting. Well, and that's another thing I like is it, it looks like it's first person only, and it's, like, your little controls or, like, uh, your radar and, like, your targeting yeah. is all in the cockpit. It's all real. Right. Because in the movies, the overhead like the the displays and on the in all the cockpits don't make any sense right they don't do anything but in this they like they've tweaked it enough where it still looks the same but all of the things you look at actually well tell and, you something and like in battlefront you know you can play third person which most people do because it's yeah. actually smarter because you can almost yeah. see behind you a little um and then like if i was in the cockpit which i would have fun with uh i would you would see that little like targeting thing just uh-huh. floating around in space in front of you you yeah. know and then you you line that up to shoot oh. so i don't know if that's going to be the case on this or you actually have to use your targeting computer that's so cool so yeah that would be really neat i'm gonna totally nerd out and throw on my you know x-wing helmet <laughs> as i sit there on my xbox and play yeah. this so it's too bad i can't wear that in my vr at the same time the total immersion <laughs> Well, if you could modify it. Yeah, maybe. Take off the I visor. could probably do it with the Poe Dameron one because that visor, you know, it goes, goes up, up and down. down. Yeah, so yeah, probably. That could be fun. But yeah, it's interesting that they're you know referring to it as the New Republic instead of the Rebellion. So it has to be, you know, end of Empire. Well, it is. They, yeah. they, they've announced that. Oh, they have? Um, in one of the trailers, they talk about, like, the... The second Death Star has fallen, but the Imperial Star Destroyer fleet is still a threat to the okay. galaxy. So I wonder if we're going to see Ray Sloan. Who's Ray Sloan? Ray Sloan is really big in like the um, the extended universe, if you will, oh. the new canon extended universe. Um, she's in a lot of the supplementary material, books and comics, and um, I can't remember if she was in Battlefront. I don't think she was. Yeah, I'm not familiar with her. But she's a really cool character. She's like an admiral. I think. Oh, she was. I think she was in Lost Stars. Oh, which you read? I did. Yeah, um, but I can't remember 100. Yeah. percent Could be wrong on that. Um, I, I am interested in maybe hopefully learning a little bit more because there is a story mission. Uh, there's a single player right. mode as well as the multi. It's going to be focused mostly on the multiplayer. And I couldn't like. tell in that um, trailer. Is it saying that you can choose the side you're going to play the story mission, no. or you play both? You play both. It's back and forth. Yeah. So kind of like what was it? Halo Three, Halo Four. Oh, yeah. You had, like, a mission as Master Chief, and the next one, your Arbiter, you know? <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Yeah, um, but I, I'm excited to kind of see what's this, what is going on in the story because um, I've read Bloodline, which is f- further down in the timeline than this one will be. Right. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I, I bet that we'll watch, um, in the story mode, we'll see, like, the uh, Star Destroyer crash on Jakku, mm, yeah. things like that. Um, yeah, because... I've been learning a little bit more. I've, I've watched the Star Wars Explained, like Star Wars timeline video. Yeah. And it, and it shows a map of like different regions that people are taking over. So I'm kind of interested in seeing like the New Republic having like a home base because so it exists, but the Empire also still exists and like territorial wars. That that That's pretty interesting to me. Like, yeah. Almost like a feudal era war. That could be. In space. <laughs> well, what you were talking about the ter- ter- uh, territories and stuff it reminded me of risk you know the, yeah. the board game um and then it made me think of that other mode that they were talking about where you have fleets yeah. that sounds like fun well it's it's kind of like the capital supremacy where you you do like different all the modes kind of in order right you, you do kind of a dog fight and, and then you take out the support and then you have to go to the or the, the like venator class if you will yeah. uh and then you have to go take out the main star destroyers yeah so that'll be cool and flagship then, um Another thing that's really interesting about this this time period in Star Wars is we don't know too much, but as far as like new canon, but um, I, I'm interested in seeing if like different sects of the Empire kind of splinter off and start like mm. different admirals or, or moffs or someone trying to like take control of, of starships and like yeah. holding areas on their own and independent of like the Empire itself. So that could well, be I mean, cool. we see that like in the Mandalorian, especially. Um, oh with uh, Moff Gideon right or different people are kind of just trying to take control of their little corner of the galaxy yeah. so yeah I wonder if there will be any Mandalorian tie-ins that's actually our next story is um, talking about a, a tie-in uh, that it says uh, rumor of Star Wars squadrons may see a return of a character from the Clone Wars um, we know Hera's there so we know Hera's from there from Rebels, Rebels. Um, but I guess this character is one of the clones uh, Hawk Oh. Is one of the clone like fighter pilots, I think. So, 
we'll see that. I don't remember Hawk personally because there's so much Clone Wars that there are a lot of characters that I don't remember, especially the clones. Yeah. There's so many of them. Uh, you know, I remember Fives and, uh, you know, Jesse and all the important ones. But, yeah, um, yeah I don't remember Hawk, but that mm. could be interesting. And there, the rumor, again, this is all rumor, is that uh, Tamora Morrison will be doing oh, okay. um, the image capture and that uh, D. Badly, D. Bradley Baker will be doing the voice. So okay, who cool. does all the clones and clone yeah. wars. That'd be really cool. Um, another character that we know is in there is uh, Wedge Antilles. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he was in the trailer as well. Yeah, Wedge and uh, yeah, and Hera. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, you know, a Mon Mothma or a Princess Leia, yeah. uh, maybe Admiral even a Han Akbar. Solo. Probably not Luke. I don't know. I don't think at this point in time Luke would be flying mm. with the New Republic at all. Uh, yeah, I, he would be around. He wouldn't be in hiding. He would be a no. prominent figure. Right. But I I don't know if he would have to, anything to do with the Starfleet, you know. I'm hoping that the story mode mainly focuses on smaller on the ground kind of things and mm-hmm. that we you just like hear about the the head up people, the the right. Leia's and stuff taking charge but like you're just working with like your squadron yeah um that'd be really cool yeah so super pumped about this can't wait till it comes out do you remember when it said it was planning september 15th september 15th wait, okay maybe not oh no Sept- <laughs> september 15th is when the new book from wizards of the coast is coming out <laughs> oh i did get that text you send to our dnd group yeah, yeah. <laughs> i forgot when squadrons is coming out i'll look it up okay yeah look that up um well, that's pretty much it. I mean, do you have anything else you want to add about Squadrons or any other news? Uh, no. Super excited. Yeah. That's it. Looks looks great. October 2nd. October 2nd. Okay. Oof. Hopefully that's when it does launch. Because me being a fan of Red Dead, uh, both Red Dead and Star Wars games, obviously, too. But Red Dead was like, oh, yeah, we got a new update. Oh, we're not giving you a new update because of coronavirus. Oh, it's coming soon. No, it's actually not coming soon. Yeah. Oh, we're going to update it. Oh, we're going to update GTA 5 instead. Like, we've been waiting for months for a Red Dead Online update. Yeah. And then, you know, the um, Star Wars Pod Racer, they decided, oh, it's going to come out on this day. And then the day of the release, just kidding. The day of the release they stopped? Yeah, it was oh, the day wow. of the release they said, oh, it's not coming out today. It's coming out later. We'll let you know. TBA. And then I did read that now it's announced again that it's coming out, I think... 23rd Ouch. just tomorrow yeah yeah that's not that bad yeah no it was just a month or so uh, i think oh, it was like may was i thought may it was 12th. supposed to come out oh okay yeah it was like may 11th or may 12th or something okay so yeah i, I didn't follow that story very closely i'm a, upset that not upset but um they delayed cyberpunk 2077 as oh well. did they and again we were supposed to get it like two months ago. Oh man! But now uh, it's been pushed back to. It's been pushed back like another two months. Hmm. That's the one that's got Keanu Reeves in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for that game. So I I just watched John Wick two yesterday. So mm. I'm watching it with a friend of mine who has them all. And I've never seen any of them. Oh really? No. Yeah, I just watched the first and the second, and I'm probably gonna watch the third tonight. But uh, man, not, not Keanu. If I keep you up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna play VR until you're. Oh, there you go. Keanu is awesome, but he is not a good actor. No. 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 Everyone loves him and yeah. and he, you know, he's deserving of it, yeah. but he's not a great actor. <laughs> well, that's why so back when I first met my wife, she, I asked we in conversation uh she asked or I asked what her fa- who her favorite actor was and it was Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. And at the time I made fun of her and I still kind of make fun of her cuz he's not a good actor and he's always known as not a good actor. Right. Um I and, mean, he was freaking Ted or Ted. Bill, one of them. Ted, I think. Yeah, I don't know which one he was. I think he was Ted. I'm kind of excited to see that movie. I don't have high. I don't have any expectations for the new Bill the and remake, Ted adventure. Yeah, yeah, I know. But yeah, he's not a good actor, and I'm a little. I don't. He's a great guy, mm-hmm. but my favorite movie of all time is The Day the Earth Stood Still. Well, I wouldn't say favorite movie. It's like up there. Yeah. The Day the Earth Stood Still from 1945, and or 47 somewhere around there. And uh, somewhere before I was born, it's like 1950s. Yeah, before anyone old, was listening to this, black and white. <laughs> um, and they remade it with Keanu Reeves as the main actor, and it is horrible. Oh, really? It's terrible. And yeah. uh, that that kind of turned me off to him. Well, Lou, back to Star Wars. I mean, a lot of people have been like lobbying for him to be Ren in like a Old Republic setting. Okay. 
Kylo Ren? Uh, not not Ren. I'm sorry. Um, I could see him being like an old Kylo Ren. Old Kylo. Actually, yeah. I mean, Adam Driver could do that, but because um, they're not too far off in age, I guess. Um, wow. You really once you start recording, you just can't remember any of your Star no. Wars information. Uh, why can't I think of that character's name? He's the He's the character Revan. There it is. Oh, Revan. Revan. Yeah. Not... I can see that. Yeah. So... He would actually be a good Revan because he doesn't have too much emotion when he acts. Yeah, maybe. I feel like Revan could. I just worry that like, because like I was watching John Wick two, mm-hmm. and there's this like scene where he has to deliver this line, and he's like supposed to be like this dope line, like ah, oh, this is how I feel, and I'm gonna do, you know, and it was so cheesy that I'm like, if I saw that in a Star Wars setting, I would be like, Ugh. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I mean, again, I have a bias towards Star Wars. Like, my mom has been telling me, she always brings this up. She goes, oh, Mark Hamill's not a good actor. Mark Hamill was terrible in the first ones. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, and I don't know if it's because I grew up with it, and so it's like I can't picture any other way to deliver a Luke Skywalker line than yeah. the way Mark Hamill does it. She's like, oh, yeah, he was so bad in the first one. And I'm like, I don't think so. Maybe he wasn't like a super trained actor, but... I thought he did pretty good. And he's like one of the most, you know, esteemed voice actors of our time now. Yeah. So uh, he's also an avatar, which. Oh, is he? Yeah, I get, get uh, excited for that. He's Ozai. So you hear a little bit of him in the first season, okay. but you hear a lot more of him in the third. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, he's, I think he did really well, uh, especially with George Lucas's lines. I mean, those are difficult to deliver, but I think he did a pretty good job. Yeah, what is it that uh, Harrison always said? He said, you can you can write this shit, but you can't say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excuse the language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, there was a, a, a video that someone made of old, um, old was it Harrison Ford and yeah. young Harrison Ford stuck together in quarantine. Oh, it really? so funny. You got to look gotta that up. I got to check that out. Yeah. That sounds good. Well, that's going to be it now that we've brought it back to Avatar again. You know, uh, it's like poetry. It rhymes. You know, bring, it, bring it back to the beginning. Uh, <laughs> it's called, uh, in, in comedy, it's, it's a callback. Yeah, it's callback. There you go. Yeah. Uh, planting and payoff is what we call it in film. <laughs> it's a little different. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and end there. Thanks again for listening, guys. Um, again, reach out to us. Give us some questions. We'll love to answer them on air. But no one's asked us any. <laughs> nope. So tweet us uh, at btr star wars and find us on facebook at btr star wars um as well as we're on youtube at uh beyond the real pod and instagram at beyond underscore the underscore real so reach out to us talk to us send us an email at beyond the real pod at gmail.com as well and uh thanks again for listening uh Preston, anything you need to add may the force be with you may the force be with you we're out reverse punch it <laughs> Back it up. Back it up. <laughs> <laughs>